to Space News. I'm Braden. I'm Zell. I'm Dan. And I'm Andrew. Uh, this is the first time we've had the whole crew orbiting uh, in what did USS? We call yeah, yeah. Big Something. Theory. Big Theory. USS Pro. Big Theory. Something like that. I don't know. Uh, welcome to Space News. We got tons of uh, some cool space news coming today. Uh, what do we have first on the docket here? We have uh, the first asteroid ever discovered to have three moons. Count them. Moons. One, two, three, baby. Yeah. Uh, it beats the amazing record of two. <laughs> that was before. Uh, now it's the first ever uh, object to have three that we know of so far. Yeah, object it's, to have it, three? It, to how many have three? I didn't. Just I didn't, object? Like the first ever object to ever have three? Anything? Well, first asteroid. No. Asteroid. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. First okay. asteroid cool. to have, uh, I guess it's pretty rare to have asteroids have their own, like a big enough asteroid have their own moons, I guess. Yeah, that's got to be a fucking huge asteroid. So it's only it's it measures about 260 kilometers, so about 160 miles. So it is a pretty big, chunky, uh, chunky piece of rock. It's thick. It's a yeah. chunky boy. It's uh, named 130 Electra. And Electra. So, uh, Electra. Yep. Named so, after Electra Nachios. I like that. <laughs> uh, probably Ooh. more the uh, the no. Greek tragedy character, but I don't think so. Why? You want to know why? Because Electra carries fucking size. Size have three points. It's got three moons. Fuck you. Oh, yeah. that's it. Some, Count so it someone's, a, someone's a fan. Wh whoever named that asteroid, gotta be. Gotta well, be. maybe <laughs> except it was named Electra before they found the third one too. It's not like they changed the name. Oh, I heard they did. <laughs> yeah. Don't take this from me. I have so no it is, evidence it is to the contrary. Exceedingly rare because over like of the one million one hundred thousand asteroids that we've just discovered over the last one hundred and fifty years, only. 150 are known to actually have at least one moon not to say two or three <laughs> only 150 so far have at least one moon okay. i listen i think we need to up our standard of what we're calling moons yeah i mean like is it are these three of these things even made of fucking cheese like come on right you know what i mean like is this like if this thing's only 253 kilometers Oh, that's it's that's not a, that that's big. A, that's a that's a big asteroid though. That's a planet killer. Easy. Yeah, yeah, sure, planet oh. killer, I guess. But <laughs> the like, I guess, I guess so. The the three mo like three moons like how big are they? What's well, they're not that big. They're about one point six kilometers across. It seems like that's the I think the that's the one. smallest. Yeah, that's the newest one. That's the smallest one. I think there's it has like yeah it has the other two, but I think that's the smallest one. Hmm. Well, still. 1.6 so that the 1.6 kilometer that's I mean that's that's still a big asteroid is that an earth killer no, i don't think a full killer but it'd be like a devastating a city it's devastating a big chunk probably a country let's say one point i guess it depends how fast it's going it's true uh up next we've got uh oh this is spacex wrongly ac ac accused of having something crashing into the moon we talked about this, I think, on the last Space News or maybe two Space think, News ago. I think we did. There was going to crash in, and it's from, like, 2015 or something, and there was going to crash early March. Turns yeah. out. China. SpaceX. Well, they're pretty sure it's not the SpaceX one. I think they, uh, they might have misidentified it uh, as a SpaceX, but now they're pretty sure that it's a Chinese long March three C rocket stage that is actually out there. China's so. just letting their shit crash everywhere they want. Oh, dude, space. all over. It's like, nah, it's going to fucking, it, not a problem. Yeah. Wherever they want. Well, I mean, it's pretty, it's, it's kind of normal to let rocket stages just kind of go wherever. Cause they usually just burn up in the atmosphere or wherever it's the, that's kind of the, the standard protocol. It, to me, it was weird that they like lot, like it's weird that, you wouldn't know what it was like it, it, that it even got misidentified as a SpaceX rocket was weird to me. Cause I'm like, do they just, are you telling me that once these things go into space, whoever owned them just goes, eh, 
<laughs> well, they, space no, at, first, yeah. at first they thought it was an asteroid because the, this object, like its designation is WE0913A. So it didn't really, they didn't really know what it was at first. And they spotted it back in 2015, like Zell said, and they originally thought it to be an asteroid. And then they identified it. Um, it there was a little piece, like an observation that they saw that the, the, that specific object had actually passed uh, like between us and the moon like two days after uh, one of the, another mission was was launched, the Discover mission with the Falcon 9. I guess that was yeah, the one that, that involved the super, Falcon rocket. That's the one where it's like it's got the acronym, but we don't really know what VR is. Right. <laughs> it's just something like that. Um, so – so when they, you know, when they compared it up, when they kind of hit the news that it was the SpaceX rocket, like another uh, John Giorgini of NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory uh, kind of keeps, I guess he keeps tabs on some of the active spacecraft, noted that the Discover's orbit doesn't take it close to the moon. So this kind of raised the question as to whether how could that rocket have passed the moon two days after the launch? Yeah, that makes oh, sense. Just the just the distance wouldn't make sense. It's too too far for this. The two days, right? Yeah, and so then they took the they went back to the I guess they went drawing back to board. the drawing board, did a bunch of a lot of complicated math that they're good at, and then they found out that like the the best chance, like oh, they went back to, like in the launch records and the the calculations kind of pointed out to this China this Chinese long march long march three C rocket at at would have been in the right place at the right time approximately so they're again it's like this is like they're pretty sure it's this object but they're not a hundred percent sure it's like 98 percent or something hmm. that's pretty good. we'll take 98 it's a pass it's an a Come and on. yeah it, again I, it seems weird that like to me i'm like you think that these companies launching these things you know sh I, you thought they would i to be honest thought they'd have some sort of tracking or something to be like yeah we know exactly where our debris is but i guess like a it's, transponder or something yeah something of like yeah we know where it is just so we can keep tabs on it since it's our responsibility of where this thing ends up is and it there like, like no. what's gonna you can't what are they gonna do the space police gonna come after you no i guess so <laughs> what are they gonna space, fucking force. Do? space yeah. force uh internet no, i guess space space laws don't apply yeah. um next up we have Oh, this one was cool. The first ever photograph from the James Webb Telescope. Uh, there you have it right on the screen above us there. Uh, 18 little specks. That's what? cool. This is ex Am I well, missing something? Well, it's because the, it's the James Webb Telescope has 18 mirrors, and this is taking a picture through each mirror in order to calibrate them all into one focal length. Yeah, so why is this make space? This is fucking space news here. What is it, what's happening? There's just a couple fucking dots. Where well, have you been? Where have space? you been? The James Webb Telescope is like the most. It's the I one know, of the greatest thought, feats we've ever done. I'm ready to see fucking selfies with aliens here. What are we talking about? A couple dots. They're coming. What's well, coming? They're coming. Com this is like this oh, is fuck. monumental though. This is the first thing we're ever seeing from the James Webb. I mean, I'll, I'll give it to Andrew. It's it's not quite. It's not. It's it doesn't. If, it's quite yeah, unremarkable, yeah. just to the the layman. With no context, you'd be like, "That sucks." There's <laughs> nothing nothing in this picture. Yeah, give gone. me a piece of black paper and poke some holes in it. No problem. Same thing. I can do the same thing. <laughs> Well, they also they also did something that they didn't think they could do before because they actually took a selfie of the James Webb, like the the mirror array. They actually used it. They used the uh, the not, the near cam, the near infrared cam, apparently, and they were able to utilize it to take a picture. I think if you scroll down a little bit farther in that article, there is a uh, there's a they, they took a picture of the actual thing right there, and they were surprised that they could actually do it because they didn't originally when they made the announcement like they weren't anticipating being able to actually take a picture of the the thing itself but they said that they were able to do it and uh so that's it was a the pretty furthest cool selfie bonus. from earth of all time right now pretty much well there's the mars one the tesla oh, yes <laughs> like okay. there's the the space there are the the rovers the rovers yeah i forgot about the rovers <laughs> a sad robot noses but it's cool. We look forward to seeing, you know, in, in the next coming months, uh, you know, by the end of 2020, be like for sure. 12 dots next time. Yeah, we're going to be seeing tons. <laughs> uh, amazing stuff out of there. So it's going to be uh, mind-boggling. 
I'm excited. Uh, what else do we have here? We had um, they tearing me apart, Lisa. Three galaxies <laughs> tearing each other apart in a stunning new Hubble telescope image. So that's what the Hubble's doing. And you got to think that if the James Webb was there, we'd be looking like just a way better photo. This well, is stunning. It's different. It's different. Yeah. Because the James Webb is shooting in near infrared. Yeah, I guess so. But still, you're, they're going to be yeah. able to turn that into some pretty cool shit. Yeah, I was like, everybody forgets, like, the Hubble's still up there. It's still doing things. Yeah. <laughs> it's still up there taking pictures. And, uh, um, people, Dan. Yeah, Hubble's, Hubble's old, old news. news, bud. <laughs> uh, another, another cool piece of information about those those galaxies like they were actually like that picture that image is actually identified by uh a civilian effort that they went it's one of those uh kind of things like what is they called they called it the the zoo galaxy project or something like that where essentially like nasa outsources a lot of the identification of some of these galaxy clusters and stuff like of all the hundreds of thousands of images that the, the hubble collects they put it up for people to kind of you can log in like you can go to the website and you can go through all these images and kind of they just give you a little like you click here to be like what does this galaxy look like and da, 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 da. and they take all the data and you know stuff that would take a couple scientists years takes you know a couple weeks for 100 and 175 you know, volunteers that just go in and look at these cool pictures that the Hubble's taking of galaxies or whatever. I think those galaxy cluster is designated IC2431. It's about 681 million light years from Earth. And so you have all of the, you have these three galaxies like colliding into each other. It looks amazing. Um, like, when right. you look at it, like. It, it's really cool. And it's, um they're saying that it, like you see these three galaxies coming together and you think like, oh shit, like you know, they're all going to crash into each other and, you know, they're going to tear each other apart, but actually they're going to come together and merge is what the uh, predictions are. And if you were in those galaxies, if your planet or your star was in that galaxy, they said you probably wouldn't even notice like there's you're so much you're, space between, right? There's so much space there that your star, your, your star's kind of orbit might change, but otherwise you wouldn't really notice. Well, I mean, there is uh, a chance of you getting hit by some other cosmic debris coming through, but like very small chance because it's you won't so even know like that you're part the space is the spaces between stars are so yeah you know, so. so huge so you wouldn't even be there so um if you compare it with our galaxy i guess the milky way is thought to have done the same thing been through the same process like we've probably it's probably eaten it's a it's a chunky galaxy it's probably eaten more than like a dozen galaxies over the past 12 billion years of its existence well and, and we're going to do that to andromeda in the next it's going to collide years or something Right. So, but then they're saying like at that point, like it'll probably completely change our night sky. Like you'll see different, you would be able to see, you know, when we're around. There's way more stars. Yeah. yeah. Like, I good. remember when the Orion constellation was over there. Back in my day. Yeah. That'll so be I'll part was when we're part of the collective consciousness. Yeah. I'll yeah. still be there. Don't you worry. <laughs> That's cool though. And that, yeah, I mean, and at the center of those three colliding galaxies you'll probably see like they say like new stars be formed mm -hmm. all, all the loose gas and stuff will all kind of crush down start spitting out new stars only, if only we could experience the time scale of the universe the brilliant cosmic dance continues yeah it would be cool to be able to uh step back from it and watch it all play out but not in the cards in this lifetime unfortunately unfortunately not uh, what else do we have? A solar storm knocked out 40 SpaceX satellites satellites out of the sky. <laughs> satellites. Um, after the company ignored scientists' warnings. Um, I'm sure astronomers were happy about this because the growing complaints about these fucking things. Um, people hate them. Well, the thing is funny. When I pictured this in my head, I pictured like, you know, your giant, you know, coronal ejection coming out and like smashing into these these satellites and you know electricity sparking and all this stuff like i thought that's what happened but actually apparently what happens is that when you have these types of events what happens is when they hit the atmosphere of earth the atmosphere of earth actually expands and so when it expands these these satellites that were parked in their normal type of orbit where they normally do is like they, when they launch these satellites, they put them in like a parking orbit to kind of get them in alignment to figure out yeah. where they're going to put them. And then that parking orbit where they put them apparently was within 
the expand like that expanse zone of where the atmosphere was going to hit it so they actually got pulled down by air resistance they got pulled down by atmospheric re- resistance and they ended up just like dragging mm-hmm. into the atmosphere and well, so yeah. now they're fucked and only was it nine out of 40 49 are still there <laughs> yeah. yeah they parked them there at 209 kilometers and that's where they like check all their systems before they put them in their normal orbit so yeah they warned them don't you you know what they warned them that the storm was coming they ignored it so what they did is they ended up they tried to just turn the satellites like you know like a piece of paper to yeah. try and minimize the resistance <laughs> try to turn them into the storm to kind of like yeah. try to cut through the solar storm and yeah knocked all, all worked the for time. nine of them right it worked for nine so i mean it's yeah. not bad i mean if you would have waited a week they would have been fine but I w- it's you know what though it's one of those things like now they know they tested they're like no we can't uh What's the financial loss? I feel like we did know about that. It's like, we did know. I just, we told you, like, this is probably going to happen. Do you think they're a write-off? Like, is there insurance for space storms? That's a good question. I mean, how they, they're fairly small satellites and they launch a bunch at a time, like 50 at a time, but still the cost of just to launch the rocket and shit. I mean, it's not a cheap endeavor. No. Throw those up there. So, you know what, though? Elon can afford it. Fucked up. They fucked up. (laughs) He can write it off. Yeah. I'm sure he can cover it out of his pocket change. So, yeah. And that was a, and that was a lower magnitude solar storm. They rate them on a scale of five, and that they claim that was a two. So, Mm -hmm. a low moderate kind of storm. So, next time, if it's a three or a four. Um, Yeah. that's pretty much all we have uh, for spaces this week. We have uh, some co- some news coming from the conspiracy corner. Um, the the honking. honking is still happening, still going on. Uh, barely, barely. The police have now come in and ha- are breaking up the protesters, and they're we breaking getting... up the protesters and also breaking the protesters. It there's tons of videos coming out. I mean. You know, I said, I think I called it like last week. I said, you know, there's the videos of when the police RCMP are now because Canada enacted the Emergencies Act, which gave the RCMP powers and jurisdiction. And I said, as soon as they roll in, man, it's game over for these people. They don't fuck and, around. And, you know, you're getting a lot of videos. Of, you know, they, the optics aren't good. They're not good. I'm Especially when you got leaked group chats of fucking one cop saying, wait till the protesters hear our jack boots hit the ground. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's not all good. This is, it's just not. I understand there was a problem with these people digging in and it was upsetting. And but know what happened throughout this protest? It went. These anti mandate protesters, right? That's what they called them this whole time. And then as soon as that act was in, like put into place, the emergency act, it was now anti-government protesters. It switched on a dime. It was crazy. Overnight, it went from anti- well, mandate- anti-government mandate protesters. But no, but the, the wording of the titles and the headlines stuff were this anti-government protesters. That's where it switched. It was weird. Yeah. As soon as as soon as the act went in, it was anti-government protesters. Now you have fucking riot horses. Well, it's it, the, the thing that, like, I was watching a few videos, and don't get me wrong, like, I'm not justifying any act of violence on either side, but, like, a lot of these fucking protesters were, like, getting in the way of the horses on purpose, and they're not going to fucking stop. Dude, horses, they're not going to stop. No, just, well, not only, like, they're trained. They're trained for this shit. They're going to walk right over top of you like they fucking did. Yeah. And, they, like, I'm watching this video, and they are... They're trying to get in the way of these horses to stop them. I'm like, you are going to lose this battle 10 times out of 10. Yeah, horses, 1,500 like, pounds. Everyone knows cavalry destroys foot troops. Everyone. Have you never played any kind of Age, Age of Empires? Vampires, okay? <laughs> right? yeah, like it's, I don't know. It's, it's wild. Know, wild it, shit. My it's wild is, that this is, hap- this is happening on our home turf with like Canadians versus Canadians. Like it's just... It's so hard to watch. It it, it it is hard to watch. It's a little embarrassing on all sides for me it's, watching. The, um, my freedom thing blockade is, needs to go home. And, yeah, it, it's it's and it's, it's, it's need to lessen. And, yeah, the mandates. I I said as soon as they put us in that in that last lockdown, I went, ooh, we lost. A, I, you could just feel the the in the air, people going, huh, what? <laughs> Doesn't make any sense. And then <laughs> when this started, I'm like the truck convoy and stuff. You know, I hate to say it, blockade the blockade the the convoy that started this i 
have no really i can't i have a hard time feeling for them because they were exempt this whole time so they could work and now that they've been like hey the state's board has been like you know what now that things are a little better we want you guys to get vaccinated as well or do rapid tests at the boarding so they're like what this is unbelievable now there was no or rapid test i don't believe i think you well it's vaccinations uh well i thought it was and rapid test but they wanted them to be vaccinated which most are some aren't and now they're upset about that but i'm like you know what these truckers no offense truckers what you're doing i get i hate the mandates too but you weren't you where were you when the small businesses were getting shut down a year ago and couldn't do anything you didn't give a shit uh because you were working and now that you're not working and everyone else is you want us to cry for you you know what's uh you know what's not a good look either though in this situation so they said uh you know you had to be vaccinated and then they just made an exemption if you're a trucker carrying medical goods or vaccines you are exempt so there is a few exemptions yeah it's a couple if you're a trucker and you're not vaccinated and you're carrying medical supplies you can still get across um you know the other bad look was that their their like mou said that they wanted to base like i'm paraphrasing here but they wanted the government to disband and they wanted to put in a, a committee installed by the convoy to oversee the government and i'm like that's a they wanted the governor general to appoint them as like a citizens committee of government or something. Unelected, yeah. Elected. <laughs> I was like, that's not a good look. And then as I mean, soon that's... as people started to find out, they're like, well, we don't want that anymore. We change our minds. We change our minds. We don't Especially want that. Especially after, like, I, I understand, like, the Daily Show probably handpicked the worst possible people to put on TV. Oh, when sure. they went into, but like, oh my God, these, like, it's, it was such an awful look. For Canada, like I would, I don't think I've ever been so fucking embarrassed in my life. Embarrassing. Uh, uh, every single one of them is, fucking mouth breathers, man. Every the one, single one the of them. One it was thing, though, horrifying. I mean, this is still being debated heavily in uh, our House of Commons, and it's be voted on tomorrow. But if this is allowed to go through, the precedent has been set that if you deem a protest anti-government or a threat, this and that this it's been set that you could just do it again. Listen, listen, I have the 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 other problem I have with this protest and the bad images coming out. And I said this a week ago to you guys, I don't care. I don't care. The people that are now up in arms going, the RCMP can do this. This is ridiculous. The Gustapo said this. I'm going, no, no, shut your mouth. They've been doing this at Ferry Creek for over a year. Chainsawing people out of trees. Out of the trees. And no one gives a shit. No one gives a shit. Dude, the, the truckers were blowing past them to get their logs no one cared when the rcmp were you know beating up indigenous people no one cared and i'm like now that it's in your face all it in our capital on the mainstream news people are like well this seems to be a little heavy-handed i'm like no shit everyone's been saying that who's been paying attention to the rcmp who gets hammered by these protests in fairy creek and stuff like that some of the pipeline protests going on have this is not new that's why i said i said men when the rcmp come and start chainsawing these people out of their trucks and start trampling them i'm like didn't the, didn't the ottawa police kind of put out a statement that said like we we told you guys to go like we we asked you nicely for the last couple of weeks like we were like we were like treated you with kid gloves like we said come on like you guys can go home and then the rcmp thing because they, the the ottawa police like couldn't do anything or they weren't doing anything. They, they, some, they were just weren't there some ill-equipped kind of like, and underfunded to yeah. kind of handle that kind of influx of issues. So it's like I'm it's like, kind of like how else do you respond to this? Like we like we need these people to go home, and I, I don't know. Like, I mean, there are other options. I'm just saying it's, it's the same. Just, that's the fastest way. I agree, I agree, I agree. But I'm saying this is to say that this is now like to invoke a national like wartime act pretty much like you know but do you have enough do you have another like is there well, an alternative provincial, legislation provincial, to no, have a, provincial ones that could have done almost the same thing uh okay again i don't think that invoking the national one was unfortunate but it i think it was like the reasoning that i've read is it's a jurisdictional thing for law enforcement like it was a jurisdictional nightmare because of provincial municipal and federal all operating at the same place by yeah, enabling that act OP- had, yeah because right they got city opp and rcmp yeah so right? then it's a like logistical nightmare this is just like rcmp in charge it doesn't matter your jurisdiction federal is in charge we take it over now 
Um, if it, if it stays in any longer, you know, maybe we have some issues, but we'll, we'll have to cross that bridge when we, when we get to it. But the only thing that the two things I hate is that one, I'm like, we all knew the last round of mandates. Everyone was like, this almost doesn't, over. It doesn't, it doesn't add up that these mandates. And now we've been put in a position where these people are like in them now. And our government's been like, well, we're not going to pander to you. But, but, then, but then the problem is, is like, even as they start to end them, the protest is like, we did it. This was us. No, we this did. was natural court. This yeah. is the natural course of action. Like, when this the was, numbers dropped from the 40,000 and then the next were like 6,000, they're like, oh, convenient. I'm like, yeah, that's how time works. That's how these COVID waves work. We like, have you not been paying attention for two years? This is how it works. We get big spikes and then it drops off. Uh, so it, it's now, JFK I think, Jr. is going to come back alive. <laughs> and fucking fight for liberty and save everybody. The, All of Nor JFK make Jr. North America great again. JFK the, Jr. is going to be a uh, uh, induct or uh, appointed a citizen of Canada and then run for office yeah. in Canada. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That and that's to happen. the the other thing is, it's like these mandates are almost over. Um, what I hope to see is, I hope to we don't see the governments hesitating to remove mandates because they're worried about the protesters thinking like they've given power to them fucking end them if it's time to end them end them but the, the hesitation isn't going to be due to the fucking protesters the hesitation is going to be due to the fact that we still don't know what variant's coming next but that's a fucking fact hey that we, we're, we're saying this right now but it's over the, i'm going back to play shows they just uh, they removed everything except for the masks and the yep. vaccine passport yeah, but that's, we, that's, that's, next on the, that's next on the list we'll see though like i just we don't know what variant comes next Oh. And that's something that we I don't need to be listen. I don't about. think people I'm gonna, care. I'm going to make a. I'm going to make a personal bet to myself that there will be no further full scale shutdown of private business. I hope not. God, I hope not. There's not a chance. Can't. That can't. I, I don't think that, you can. I think. I think if they thought it, it was bad on this last round, if they do this again in the fall, it's going to be. It's going to be real bad. But well, well, it's going to be even louder honking. Yeah, <laughs> extra yeah, honking. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Um, anyway, the other interesting get any of this shit you ordered from IKEA, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> the other interesting uh, thing in the conspiracy news was that uh, uh, Jean Luc Brunel, who was uh, Epstein associate, uh, mm. was found dead in shit. his cell uh, in Paris. Was he strangled? No, he's uh, hanging. He was he, hanging. he was hanging. Yeah, seventy six year old. <laughs> he's been what held for his, over uh, a year. What did his uh, cellmate look like? Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> it was that same Jack cop. Just yeah. so, ex cop. Yeah. Uh, no, he's seven six. He had been held for over a year. Seventy six. Yeah, on suspicion of like, you know, horrible he things. Was a, horrible he was a rape, cloak, and pedo, traffickers. Yeah. He's a fucking pedo. He um, got exactly what he deserved. Probably actually probably got off easy. He was pretty much being held be for an inquiry into sex traffic and sexual assault against. Uh, victims of like French citizens. Yeah. yeah, he had some. They had some stuff on him, like specifically, like not. In, I mean, he was an associate of Epstein, but at this point, like who wasn't? Yeah, and, and a, not even associate, a frequent companion. Like, right, he was always with him. And so, like, but he had the, he. They linked him to other stuff. Like, I think he was like a French. Like, he had like a French modeling service or something that he was yeah. Uh, yeah. sourcing his. Seriously. Yeah, so, his ladies shit. through. Yeah, yeah he, had, so. he had. Girls come out publicly and call him out, and they were hoping to get him in court. And now he's, he's so it's under it's under investigation. This whole thing. So we'll see what info comes out. Yeah, uh, they deserved they deserved to have their moment with him sitting in fucking court. But whatever, at least at least he's out of the picture. Yeah, um, you know it's an unfitting. It's well, it's a fitting end, but we would have liked to see some justice handed down to him. I don't care if he was seventy six, but um. One I know less. we didn't discuss. <laughs> I know we didn't discuss it beforehand, but I just want to. I just want to know if maybe if Dan knows something about it. It seems a little convenient to me that as COVID winds down, the escalation in Ukraine seems to come back again. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> as soon as COVID winding down, they're like, and we're going to war. Who yeah, it, the Russians came out and they're like, you know what? We want Crimea back. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's a, it's a lot. It's a complicated situation. I think there's a lot of nuance to it. So there's a lot of, like, first of all, like Ukraine, as Ukraine, there is a strategic, like, it's always been kind of a buffer between like the Soviet gateway. Union and yeah. and NATO. 
and so and like the Western powers, it's always been like that. Um, when you know, to to lend a little bit of context about why the U.S. is involved, people are like, why are we even over there? Um, pierogies. You have to the pierogies, <laughs> and also the fact that the when the originally when UK you. Ukraine declared, you know, was split off from the Soviet Union, became its own country. Ukraine held about one third of the nuclear arsenal of the of the former USSR. They had nukes like on their soil. And we asked them, give up your nukes and we will protect you. We will keep you. We, we signed a treaty. I forgot what the name of the treaty is off at the top of my head. It's something uh, Belgian, uh, something. Um, there's an actual official treaty. You can look it up. Ukraine, U.S. nuclear treaty, whatever. Um, so we're, and we're bound. Like we're North America. Yeah, we 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 are. The we have an obligation. Random on security assurances. Right. We have an we have an obligation to them because they gave up their nukes. They could have kept them. They could have kept them. There's nothing we really could do about it. But they gave them up for the sake of being, you know, a, a good whatever good companion or whatever they wanted to have uh, oh, right. foster diplomatic relations. Like we don't want nukes or whatever, but they gave up their nukes and we agreed to protect them and protect their country's sovereignty from that of, you know, if it were to come down to Russia trying to take them back. So we're over there because of that. Um, we're backing them up. We're lending them support. I don't think they're actually like U S troops. I, at this point, I don't think are going to be directly, they're not directly stationed anywhere like we've been kind of pulling them back or whatever but you kind of have this thing where now putin's been pushing in this because ukraine was getting ukraine always this happened like a couple years ago it was like the same situation 2014 because i remember because i was on uh a tour to komodo island and there was a dude from the ukraine and he was telling me all about how crazy it was over there yeah, and it's every couple every couple of years, like Ukraine gets a little bit closer to joining NATO or something like that, like leaning a little bit closer to or buddying up with some of the Western powers. And Putin feels like he's got to, or you know, that seems to be the interpretation for most of the uh, diplomatic uh, specialists and whatever you hear on the news and things like that, talking about like you know, F Putin has to flex his muscles and be like, hey, don't do it. But here we are at this point. This one's a little bit different because it's like finally we're like, no. Right. So it, it's funny because th this whole situation, like reading about it, it's like we keep calling out his stuff. You're like you've seen how uh, the uh, United States, like the White House administration and them are like calling out Putin's moves before he can do them. you would be like, yep, he's going to stage a false flag. Yep. He's going to do yeah, We have the you know locations of the troops. They're here. They're here. They're here. Blah, blah, blah. We're calling out all this stuff. We're, we're calling all his moves. But the thing is, is like we're giving him an out. You're giving Putin an out to be like, look, you could totally pull back your troops and be like, no, 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 you guys are wrong. Like and he did that. He pulled back the troops so he, just like a couple days ago. They said, oh, the troops are pulling back just so he could say like, oh, you guys are wrong. But then he put them back. Right. <laughs> Putin doesn't want to look weak like that. Is, I think that is his biggest thing is like he's never he doesn't like to lose. Peacocking. Right? He doesn't, Why else would you he, ride a fucking no bear with your shirt now. off? Well, he's <laughs> he's got he's got no way out at this point to besides looking weak. And once he looks weak, all his little ol oligarch buddies like or whatever, I don't think they want him to go to war either, because once they go, he goes to war, then the sanctions come out like they're going to hit him with a ton more sanctions that we already have. And that's going to be a big hit to a lot of his rich Russian buddies. So. I don't know. At this point, you're just they're just we're just staring. We're just staring at each other and just being moving like, chess pieces around and nothing's really happening. Yeah, and you can't you can't really do anything because Putin Putin doesn't want to back down. But if he does, like he doesn't want to look weak. That's his big thing. And I was the, watching he this hasn't documentary left a way out. <laughs> on uh, some current events and I was just half listening. I was doing some work and they were. Uh, the, but the presenter was very concerned with the amount of uh, similarities in current events right now and, and escalations as there was just before World War II. He's like, there's a lot of similarities, you know, like having uh, uh, Olympics in another country that's currently having a genocide, like, you know, these hostilities g gearing up. And he, he was going through them all and he's like, He's like, let's hope we can cooler heads prevail on this one. But there's a lot of similarities right now between now and right before uh, World War II kicked off. I think, oh. yeah, I think there's a lot of difference in the fact that, you know, we have nukes now. And also the fact that 
I think Putin knows that if he does go to war, like it's not going to be pretty. Like the optics are going to be bad because you're invading a country that you really there's the optics look like you have no the, the stuff that you're trying to justify it. Like he said, what was it? They said the separatists or there's like terrorist Separate. attack. Like we're we're trying to. Uh, you know, we found these mass graves and then people are calling it out and be like, those are the mass graves from the last war that you put there. <laughs> like those are from like those are from twenty like, years. Well, ago. maybe we don't know though. So Yeah. So uh, you know, pumping out all the propaganda and all these things and um it's it's if you go to war with Ukraine, you're literally gonna be shooting kids and grandmas. Yeah. Because that's who you see out on the streets. Like those those people are ready to fight. And that's who you're going to – and if you put that in the optics of like you got GRU thugs rolling in there in their tanks and stuff and you got babushkas on the – babushkas with AK-47s on the other side, probably AK-74s. But like you know, it, it's just not – and then the NATO will have to respond and it's going to be nasty. You're going to have F-22s coming down out, out of nowhere and the Russia knows it's, it's going to hurt. Like, it, it's, well, it's just, we'll, I, we'll have to keep just the full global warfare. Yeah, we'll have to. We'll it'll be fast. Whatever one. it is, it'll probably be fast. That's all. I'm, that's like, <laughs> whatever it's going to happen. The if last, it does come that. The last thing scary. I have for Conspiracy Corner is that reptilian overlords do, in fact, get COVID uh, as the queen has <laughs> tested positive. <laughs> Uh, for COVID nineteen, just one. Yeah, well, we've Jeez. known this the whole time. It's zootro, it's zoonotic, right? It's yeah. bouncing between different species of animals and shit like that. Like, yeah, she's bound to get surprising. it. Surprising. Let's get Everyone's into get a little bit of theorite news. Uh, this is uh, some information for you theorites. As you know, we're coming to Austin, Texas, March. Well, we the, well really, up. second to six really is the dates where we'll be there uh we've got the the meet and greet uh haunted bar crawl at starting at the driscoll bar what is that the march 4th march, march 4th 6 30 driscoll bar if you're around there and you have a bring your emf meter or make one make sure you calibrate it though yeah yeah make well, the, don't don't start the driscoll do, bar. don't make dan upset calibrate those make sure EMFs it's before we go there uh, uh, start the Art, and then on the bring fifth, your best Zach Baggins glasses <laughs> and baggy pants and and Tim Scullion, Skull Lion, <laughs> Skull uh, Lion wardrobe. And then March 5th at Central District Brewing at 5 p.m. is a theorite meet and greet. Come hang out with us, your fellow theorites. We'll hang out there for a few hours, and then after that, we'll see. Uh, We'll see everyone's state of mind and where we want to go. We'll be going to bed because we're old. <laughs> yeah, anyways, that, that also <laughs> could happen. We'll see how hungover we get the day before. Um, next up, Theodite News. We are probably six weeks out from the third annual running challenge uh, starting April 1st to 30th. Uh, we're figuring out the logistics right now. Just so you know, it is happening. Uh, we might be switching apps. Um we have a couple emails off to a couple charities we're hoping to work with this year uh, to raise some money for a charity. Uh, we'll let you guys know as soon as we kind of line up uh, what charity and, and who we're going to support this year. And we're thinking about doing a rotating thing where we pick a new charity uh, from here on out, but uh, we'll let you all know. Uh, there's going to be various ways to support. You can participate in the running challenge. We're going to hopefully line up a couple businesses that will donate a dollar amount to kilometers ran um we're that's all still in the works um so and then we'll obviously have some sort of donation page to the chair for direct link to the charity uh that we're going to be working with but um you know it's all in the works but stand to stay tuned and if you're going to participate this year you know start maybe thinking about getting a couple runs in now because six weeks goes fast get yourself a foam roller and enroll in some yoga classes before Start real slow. If you haven't ran in a while, 1Ks, 2Ks, nice big stretch, day off. Don't make the mistake I made the first year and just go full tilt with a seven first day and then your knees explode. Yeah, and tear that Achilles. <laughs> no, run 10K your first day in jeans um, and that will make you uh, Make sure faster. you carb load right mm -hmm. in the beginning, get some Ficini Alfredo. You probably want to slam can. a couple beers first because that and, will yes, loosen up. Too. Like, um, yeah, and if and if anyone wants to do the Craig challenge this year, the Craig challenge is where you polish off a bottle of red before you go and do a 6K uh, at about 11 p.m. at night. Um, 
that's the Craig challenge if you want to do that at any point. Craig's retired, buddy. It's Dragon now. Got to pull the Craig. Yeah. And Dan is going to be uh, 100% get, taking part in the, the humid temperatures of Thailand. Oh, I man, it'll be even harder. Yeah. <laughs> I had I had to up my I had to up the challenge from last time. So and that, yeah. Dan will be running in a sweat box. Yep. Every run. Running <laughs> away from fucking Komodo dragons over there, the monitor lizards in the park. And I believe, uh, me and Brayden, we talked about, because talking about the running challenge on the main show, it doesn't age well because then the challenge is over. It doesn't make any sense. So we might just start its own separate podcast and we'll give updates and stuff, leaderboards as we're going through. So it's like a separate show. Maybe let's just call it the running challenge podcast or yeah. something. When we'll do More a check or something. something. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there's also talks about uh, a possible name change, but again, all this stay tuned. More news is coming, and uh, it's it's coming six weeks out. Get rid of those dad bods. Yeah. I know I do. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're working on it. Uh, <laughs> why don't we get into some weekly UFO reviews? Uh, we got a couple of videos. One we have to look at is, because it's very interesting, and I know the backstory very well because I talked to him about it today, was Mr. Conspiracy oh, caught right. himself a UFO on tape right from his balcony of his new apartment uh sent it in and you know pretty interesting why don't we take a closer look at this one i believe cut it, cut it. right here so this is from shot in campbell river it's about 7 p.m on february 11th there is a, seemingly a strange object floating in the sky Let's watch there you can see it it oh. kind of looks like it has some bursts at the bottom there before it turns um yeah. I got an initial thought right away. Uh, there's a little bit zoomed in portion in a second here, but we got nothing. This whole thing is zoomed in uh, just for the, the shot. But if you want to go to our Instagram, we have the full video and audio up. He's, he's, that looks like uh, Pierre Le Pou. You should have done the <laughs> selfie here while he's in the video. You should have. <laughs> so I think it cuts to a, just a little bit of a close up here in a second. It's like a star balloon. It's like a floating person. It's, it's the Black Knight satellite coming Black in low. Knight. So that's that. Uh, the video ends abruptly. And when I asked him, I said, why is the video end? And he said he ended the video and ran down because that shopping center is just up the way. So he was going to run up to get a closer look. And he said by the time he threw on his shoes, ran downstairs and ran outside, it was gone. Interesting. Huh. Right, he swears. It didn't, it didn't seem to be moving very fast at all. No, no. And he said, he said, because I asked him, I thought, looking at this video right here, I thought perhaps he said there, like there seems to be like if you look like a little bit of propulsion on the bottom right here, it looks like it. There's some extra white. Uh, I said, I said, is it a mylar balloon? That's what I asked because there's some of the shots where I thought, and then people have brought that up that oh, it's mylar balloons. And you know what? It, the weird thing is, I'm like. There's got to be, like, I, I've never before even thought about how many Mylar balloons are just floating because they must be everywhere. Because every UFO now, people are saying it's Mylar balloons. He Cal, says, like. he said, he's like, listen, my phone does not capture it as good as I saw it. And he goes, it was metal. He's like, it was metal. It wasn't a balloon. It was metal. He's like, I could see it better with my eyes. And then he's like, I was trying to like get a zoom but he's like i i just couldn't do it justice yeah but the mylar balloons are pretty like metallic looking are they not yeah but i, I mean you can get shiny ones yeah. i think yeah. i to be honest though like if i go outside right now and i saw a mylar balloon i'd be like that's a mylar balloon like i'm not like i would know mm -hmm. like you would see see it and here's With the conspiracy thing. here's the thing though right with those balloons why isn't it still going up? If someone lost it, it's helium. Like this thing isn't rising either. Well, it looks like it's deflated though, right? Like it looks like it's just kind of fucking. So it's already gone all the way up is what you're saying? As high as it did and then deflated and it's this, it's kind of just hovered right above, right in front of Mr. Conspiracy's place. Looks like it. I think, I think it's an alien being, you know, super or a uh, little surveillance on Mr. Conspiracy himself. <laughs> yeah, that checks out. Uh, that makes he, sense. He also bought that. himself. He just recently bought himself like a a really expensive drone, and so I asked him. I was like, "Were you flying your drone?" He's like, "Dude, he's like, I hadn't even got my drone yet because I thought maybe he was just filming himself flying his drone, and his drone looked like that or something." And uh, 
he's like, no, I hadn't, I hadn't got it yet. And he brought it over today. And his drone looks nothing like that in the sky. So what, what are your thoughts? And initially, I did think balloon, right? Because we have seen some others that are kind of similar. Yeah. But there is like, it's either the way the light is reflecting off the balloon, or it does look like something's like some type of propulsion, but it kind of looks just like reflection of sunlight off the bottom of that, whatever that is. It's interesting that it happens when it like turns or pivots. Um, I'm going to go the weird shape. I'm going to go a four out of gimbal on this one only because it's a weird video. I've talked to him. I know him and I can, I know his tells if he was BSing me and I just don't see him BSing me this time. I don't see it. I wholeheartedly believe that he saw something weird that day. I posted on the local rant and rave here and it was not a, it was, a, it, 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 got get roasted? In, it got into some freedom chalk right away. Like there was, it was, it was it's a freedom balloon. <laughs> yeah. It is something about the government trying to give more Slowly vaccines. Slowly dispersing so I was like, COVID. I was like, oh my God. I was like, all right, delete. <laughs> but, all right. We tried that. Um, right. I'm going to go, I'm going to go with, uh, <clears throat> A three, because it it kind of looked like a balloon, but if it, he actually went down to go search for it, was it like, and it was gone that fast? Because it seems to be hovering here. Yeah, it so seems not, just sitting. It's not windy. Yeah, but I wouldn't put it past him. He's looking out on his balcony, and then he goes out the front door, being like, oh, "Where is it? Door. It's gone." <laughs> He's at the back of the building. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, oh, it's good. You know what? Props on the filming, though. He got he got it right. He yeah. filmed it well. If you want to see the full version with, uh, with again, go to our Instagram. Dan, what do you think? Uh, I'll probably give it a two, I think. If it's a – could be Black Knight satellite just floating out there, coming down, checking out Mr. Conspiracy, linking up. I'm not sure. But um, it does the, – the way that it slowly rotates, like, very much like that. Like, there seems to be some type of extension at the bottom, which you kind of see with – balloon so i kind of want to be like I, I don't know exactly what it is it isn't it's it's neat like it's cool that he saw that but it's just the way that it rotates just reminds me of some type of balloon or something like really slow rotating doesn't really have to doesn't seem to have like a yeah doesn't like the way the light hits it i'm like that's that's metallic it is it looks metallic but um that's also you have like shiny star balloons that that look like that mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, next up, this was uh, sent in by... Oh, I sorry, Andrew. care to hear what I got. No, it's fine. Go ahead. Move on. Go ahead. I'll, I'll pause it here. <laughs> you know I'll just go Peter in the next one anyways. <laughs> I'll wait. I can wait all day. I'll wait all day. Movie. I'm going to pull a Braden and just not even... No, that's it. Stay I'm, here. Not give in. You gonna, are you going to dig in? I'm digging in both heels. <laughs> both heels. Both heels. You're going to be there for 14 days, so we have to call in the That's National fine. War Measures Act. That's fine, right? Right? Force, yeah. force uh, All right. This one was sent in by – this was actually submitted to us. So um, No Dice on Instagram saw this. I think his name's Dave. Sorry, Dave, if I, if I messed up your name. Let's see what I have. No Dice, 1904. Uh, San Diego, California, February 6th, so a couple days before Mr. Conspiracies, uh, he sent in this. He saw this object. Seemingly oh, black yeah, object yeah. floating in the sky above the power lines, drifting really slow. God damn you, are you showing us another balloon? <laughs> uh, Brandon's like everything everybody's saying it's balloons but you're showing us nothing but videos of balloons <laughs> come on that's not a balloon I mean the, look at the that's way not, that it's I don't like the, the, the way that it's like traveling the way that it's, it's just like a, it looks like it's just riding air bounce. currents like it's just that's what it's doing it's going up and then it comes back down like it goes up the cooler air and put goes down on, on this one I will say it's you can't see the balloon shape as much. It does, it right. looks it's I will it's like I will admit uh, upon second viewing of this one, I'm like, okay, well maybe. <laughs> maybe. Uh all right. Andrew, what do you think? Oh, sorry, well, I wasn't paying attention. What do you, you think? Input on this one? I mean, it kind of looks like to me initially, 
it almost I feel like he'd be able to see if it was a bird, but you know when the bird just kind of hover like that, whether they're kind of, you know what I mean? Oh, if that's, that's a windy day or something. Yeah, like that's kind of what it looked like to me. It definitely looks like it's moving really balloon like. Like and for me, when I want to like the things that get the the raise my fucking gimbal scale, you know, when it get, gets me a little, you know, fully torqued here when we're talking about these things, is some type of like remarkable movements and shit like that that I just you know that don't make sense. Whereas like that looks very ordinary to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I yeah, it's its movement seems just really natural. It's just it's riding those. It's just riding air currents like just up and down. You know, the, the air gets you know, warmer as it goes lower, then it goes up and then it cools down and then it goes down. And it's just kind of, yeah. Well, so these balloons are almost as deflated as Braden right now. Look at them. If it, if it so were going sad. straight, like, yeah, if it were in a straight <laughs> line, like, you know, and it seemed to be neglecting any of the normal, like aerodynamics and any of that stuff, like it would be, yeah, yeah you, you know, you see something weird like that. It, it Fucking, you're like, that's not natural. I know rather gone like, on a that looks than very, to you. <laughs> that looks very natural to me. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's it's uh it's tough. I mean, a low gimbal, low gimbal. Thank you, F- No Dice, for submitting that. And if you have videos, Absolutely. submit them to us, please. We want to see them. Um, that's all I had for UFO videos. We're gonna have more. We post them on our Insta, Instagram, and social media posts. Um, so if you're interested in seeing some, you know, kind of current UFO videos, head to our head to our page. We're posting new ones all the time. But hell yeah. That's it for Space News this week, boys. Anything else before we uh, sign this one off? Nope. See you in Texas. Woo! Peace out, everyone. To keep up to date with all things alien theorist theorizing, follow us across social media on Twitter, Instagram, Patreon, and Facebook. For updates on new videos and content on YouTube, Don't forget to click like and subscribe and hit that notifications button to keep those eyes on the skies with alien theorists theorizing.